Ms. Rupa Moda will, of the class of 2014 will now deliver remarks on behalf of the Juris Doctor candidates of the evening division. Hello, everybody. So a warm hello to esteemed President Herbst, the Board of Trustees, Dean Fisher, faculty and staff, distinguished guests, family, friends, and of course, all the people with the robes on who I'm hoping are the graduates. Otherwise, this will get awkward pretty fast. I would like to begin by saying thank you to my peers for electing me as your graduation speaker. It's just further affirmation that UConn Law really does teach its students to have good judgment. <laughs> Jokes aside, I am truly humbled and honored that you have entrusted me to speak as your representative on this momentous occasion. I promise you that I won't filibuster, and I will do my best to keep you all engaged. But then again, I am a lawyer, so this promise may have several exceptions. Also, there may or may not be a test at the end of this speech. But don't worry, to switch things up, I will only be cold calling professors. Just kidding, don't worry guys, I won't be calling on you. So take notes, because since we have over 20 students present, and even with accounting for LLMs in the audience, we will definitely be on a B median. One of the most typical, one of the most frequent statements that has been made to me is that I'm not a typical law student. I think there is some truth to this statement. I didn't come into the world of law with any legal background. I fell into this world with a background in science and computer science. In fact, I am the first lawyer in my family. For me, the world of law has been balanced by the world of media. While many of my classmates were busy with law-related trips, I was busy traveling for media and surprisingly even took part in a beauty pageant. I won the title, it's Jewel of India Miss Connecticut 2014. So the holding of this case is definitely that I do not fit the typical law student mold. If getting into law school weren't challenging enough, law school itself had its own challenges, which were even more complex if one had no prior exposure and were further complicated for evening students. However, the thing about law school, and a point to be remembered as we all move on in our careers, is that like life, law is not a race. Quantity doesn't matter, quality does. That is the first black letter rule we should remember. Keep our focus on our own races. If we do, ultimately, we will reach our desired finish line. We don't need to outrace anyone. What we do need to do is produce a result that makes us proud, that is ethically sound, and that reflects our commitment to being guardians of justice. When I'm asked, what makes a good lawyer? I tell people to look at the traits my evening division possessed. We had a hardworking, talented, creative, detail-oriented group who were expert multitaskers. These qualities have been exemplified by our ability to balance the world of law, a crazy work life, an equally busy family life as though it were second nature. Sometimes, it was probably easier to find Bigfoot than it was to find any of my classmates due to our commitments. If employers ever question any of the skills our evening division has, you can be assured they will never question what good time managers we are. Rule number two, for us to remember is that if there is a goal we want to achieve that does not seem achievable, we must still never give up. If you have an idea, never be afraid to take steps to put them into action. Follow it through as far as you can and seek help and advice. With focus and determination, we can achieve all that we want. I'm sure that when we are working at firms or even in our own practices, there will be times when we have too much to manage. At that time, we should just take a moment and breathe. We got through law school, so we will get through our tasks. 
I must admit, coming into the world of law, I did have preconceived notions of what law school would be like. I assumed that dusty old books and robotic-like students and professors would surround me, except for a couple of exceptions. Eh, okay, I'm kidding. <laughs> this, is the, this is far from the truth here at UConn Law. As for my classmates, there was no cutthroat competition. Yes, we all wanted to be good on our grades and do well and be on the good side of the B median. But when our peers did well, we were all equally pleased with the results. If any one of us could help another student out, we would. This is a trait I hope all of us sitting here today carry forward into the real world. It is not necessary that a lawyer work in isolation or that he or she step on others to crush them and rise to the top. Instead, we should remember, if we are carried on the shoulders of giants ourselves, we will also rise higher. So, if you've been taking notes, the third rule I want us all to remember is that we must always help our peers to the greatest extent possible. There's enough room in the real world for all of us to thrive and succeed. UConn Law encourages camaraderie, and that is something that we must always remember to apply in our work environment. The fourth and final rule I want to remind you of is that we must always continue to learn. As you know from law school, the gray area of the law is our friend. Always seek out knowledge and always question what is before you. A few months after entering law school, I had dreamt that I had buried all my law books in my backyard, which I'm sure is something many of us have wished we could really do. It rained, and in the dream, the law book sprung into full-grown trees of knowledge, carrying more law books on its branches. I believe that this is the best analogy to our lives here at UConn Law School. On the one hand, we may wish that we would never have to see our case books again. However, on the other hand, the knowledge contained within them is essential to allowing us successful careers in the law. All it took was for the seeds of knowledge to be watered and fed by our professors, and our trees of knowledge emerged. We branched into various fields, but remained firmly rooted in justice. Law school was a strange world to wander into. It seemed unnavigable at the start. However, with the support of our families, faculty, friends, and each other, we made it successfully to the end. I can't say whether we all walked on the same path. I can't say whether one path was harder or easier than another. I can't even say whether we have ended up on the right path. However, what I can say with full confidence is that we have made it to the end together. We face the challenges head on and we have emerged stronger and more prepared for the real world. I truly hope that our paths cross in the future and I hope that at whatever junction you're at in your careers, you will look back at our journey together with fondest memories. In closing, I would like to say thank you to all of my peers, the Yukon administration, faculty, and staff, and most of all, to my parents, sister, and family. Court is now adjourned. Thank you and good luck. <laughs>